shot done. Now, this dirigible is, a, is about to leave the ground. You're the lot of men who are holding on to the mooring line. Everyone lets go but you. Now, do you get it? Yeah. Yeah, I hold on to the line and the ship takes me up. That's it, but be sure you don't hold on too long. Now, we'll have a net under you, so when you get up about 100 feet, let go. We'll catch you. 100 feet, eh? Yeah, but not much more than that. You might get hurt. We're ready to go, Mr. Underwood. All right, everybody. To take places. Places, everybody. Quiet, please, quiet. All right. Camera. Ship's starting to rise. There she goes. See that spot on the ship? It's a beauty, a swell thing, Mr. Underwood. Yeah, it looks all right. The ship's going up fast, isn't it? They're all turning loose. There's Ben hanging on. He's leaving the ground. Yeah, the ship's gaining altitude fast. Stand by with that net, man. He's 100 feet already. Why doesn't he drop? Let go, Ben. Do your drop. He must be up 200 feet now. Say, if he doesn't turn, turn loose quick, he better not. There he comes. Look at that ball. Steady with the net, man. Wait, hold on, hold on. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes, those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions, whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death, those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, we are privileged to have as our guest one of the top-notch stuntmen of Hollywood, Frank McGrath. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scene you are about to hear is his own actual experience. Frank McGrath is here in the studio right now, and later in the program we will bring him to the microphone. But first, let us give you the true story of how he began his dangerous career in the movies. The role of Frank McGrath is being enacted in this dramatization by the young juvenile star of stage, screen, and radio, Buddy Edwards. We take you back 18 years. It is late at night, and a biting wind whistles through lumbering boxcars as they follow a struggling locomotive through the gloom. Huddled in a corner of one of these cars are three shivering figures, two men and a boy. Say, Buddy, you're pretty young to be riding these rattlers. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, but it's better than walking. What's your name, kid? Frank. Frank McGrath. What's yours? Oh, just call me Joe. My pal here is Spike. It's good to have somebody to talk to on one of these trips. I guess it'd get kind of lonesome by yourself. You got any dough, kid? Nah, not a cent. And I could do with a little chow, too. You guys got any? Say, hey, listen, kid. We ain't had no dough in a month. I even forgot what kind of pictures it's got on it. Where are you heading, Frank? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere. I guess I'll get a job. You mean you get work? Well, sure. Why not? A lot of guys work. Well, here's one you'll never catch working. I think too much of my energy to capitalize on it. Yeah. You see, kid, we figure like this. A guy's energy is kind of sacred. Yeah. You know, you've got to respect it. Well, I wouldn't think of selling my energy. <laughs> oh, I guess that's all right for you guys, but uh, I don't look at it that way. All right. Looks like we're stopped for water. Yeah. So what you been doing, kid? Oh, I've been riding. You know, race jockey down in Caliente. Yeah? What happened? How come you quit? Oh, I was getting too heavy. Couldn't keep my weight down. You got to be light for that, you know. Yeah, that's true. Gee, I'd sure like to have a hamburger. I'm hungry. Hey, say, hey, Jacob. Hey, you guys, what are you doing there? Come on, come on, get out of there. Come on, kid, you give us that sap. Let's get out of here. Hurry up, beat it, you guys. Get out of there. Unload, kid. We're right behind you. Okay. Come on. Come on. Now, ain't that just too kind of a man, eh? He's got such a big heart. Well, he could have picked out a worse place to kick us off. Here's a town. It's not very big, but it's a town anyway. And I'll bet there's a hamburger in it somewhere. We're staying on the track, kid. The other section of this train comes through in a few minutes, and we're taking it. Yeah, we've already got our reservations. Well, I guess I'll be leaving you then. I gotta scare up a hamburger. So long. Hello there, boy. What'll it be? Uh, how much are your hamburgers? Ten cents, two for fifty. Want a couple? No, guess not. Uh, just give me one, with everything. You bet. Say, uh, what's the name of this town? This is the fair city of Truckee, Truckee, California. We got five stores, a post office, and a moving picture outfit. 
They got picture shows almost everywhere nowadays. Listen, son, I'm not talking about a picture show. I mean they're making a picture right here in Turkey. We're giving Hollywood a run for their money, I'm telling you. What'd you do, just blow in? Yeah, brakeman kicked me off the train. Pretty cold riding the rods tonight, ain't it? Oh, we were in a boxcar. We? Yeah, there was a couple of guys in there with me. We all got kicked off. But you know, I was kind of glad to get away from those birds. What for? Oh, one of them wanted some money. I had a dime, but I wouldn't give it to him. He didn't know it, though. You outsmarted him, eh? <laughs> well, uh, I guess so. There you are, sonny. One whiff. Oh, boy, that looks good. <sighs> oh, hello, Mr. Stallings. Oh. Have a seat, sir. What are you going to have tonight? Oh, I don't know, Pete. Something light. Toast and milk, I guess. Yes, sir. Right away. How's the picture coming, Mr. Stallings? Oh, pretty good, Pete. I'd like to pick up another man for tomorrow, though. Say, what about you, young fellow? You want a job? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. What doing? Working in pictures. I'm production manager of the company. We're down here on location. Oh, gee, that, that's wonderful. Well, now that you've got a job, how about another hamburger, sonny? Well, uh, I... That is, I... Oh, uh... oh, that's all right. This one's on me. What's the matter, young fellow? You troubled with the shorts? Yes, sir. You see, I, I just got into town. Yes, I... yes, I understand. I've been there myself. Give him a T-bone steak, Pete, on me. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Stallings, but really, I'm not very... What are you drinking, sonny? Milk, I guess. Oh, but, gee, I... tell I... you what, young fellow. When we finish eating, I'll get you a room up at the hotel. Good night's sleep, and you'll feel like working in the morning. Oh, gee, that's great. But I, Oh, uh... now, don't worry about anything. I'll take it out of your salary. That's all right, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's, it's practically perfect. And so for the moment, we'll leave our young stuntman in the making. What thrills await him on the morrow, we'll learn in just a minute. But first, a word from our sponsor. It is now early morning. The entire picture company is on the location set. Young Frank McGrath, thrilled that he is to have a part in this romantic business of making a motion picture, and at the same time rather embarrassed because of the woman's costume in which he has been made up, looks with wide-eyed wonderment at the strange things about him. Cameras are being set up. Platforms are moved about. Confused but delighted, young McGrath steps out of the way of one group only to block the path of another. His friend of the night before is just coming on the set. Frank greets him with genuine pleasure. Oh, hello, Mr. Stalling. Hello. <laughs> Gee, I feel silly in this woman's dress. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Well, how are you, young fellow? You're not a bad-looking girl. <laughs> Come on over here, and I'll show you what to do. Or rather, I'll show you the man who can tell you. <laughs> Boy, these fellas sure do work fast, don't they? Everybody works fast in the picture business, young fellow. It's a big job. You have to work fast. Oh, Mr. McGowan, you busy? Uh, can I see you a minute? Oh, hello, Charlie. Oh, I'm not very busy right now. Uh, this is Mr. McGowan, young fellow, the director of this picture. He'll tell you what to do. Hello, Mr. McGowan. I'm Frank McGrath. Hi, sir. Uh, this is the boy I was telling you about, J.P. You can use him on that tree gag. Yeah. How are you, son? Come over here and sit down. I'll explain everything to you. Yes, sir. Now, Frank, you see that big tree out there? That big uh, high one? That's the one. It's about 100 feet high. Yeah, it's all of that, all right. Now, here's the idea. You dressed as this woman. You're supposed to be in the top of that tree. Uh -huh. The men chop the tree down and it falls into the lake. You see, it's chopped almost in two now. Uh, yes, sir, I see. Uh, but uh, what happens to me? Well, you ride the tree down as it falls. And just before it hits the water, you jump clear. Well, the water's plenty deep, Frank. But we don't think there's much danger. Of course, you might get scratched up a little. Oh, I don't mind that. But believe me, that's a high tree. Well, would you like to try it? Sure. I'll try anything once. Well, that's the way to talk, boy. But look, I, don't, I want you to be sure about this scene. You're positive you want to do it. You don't have to, you know. Well, I'm a pretty good swimmer and diver, Mr. McGowan. I don't see any reason why I couldn't do it. Anyway, I'd like to try. We're all set, Mr. McGowan. Well, now, just a minute. Well, boy, if you've got nerve enough to try it, I've got nerve enough to let you. Get up on the top of that tree and we'll make the picture. Now, ride down the tree down as far as you can, Frank, and be sure that you jump clear. All right, everybody, this is the take. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet, everybody, this is it. Quiet. You fellas with the axes, get set there. All right, let's go. The kid got up there and he's all set, waiting to go. Yeah, plenty game. <laughs> all right, men, start chopping. Arm up. There she starts. Man, what a sight. Falling, falling faster. The kid's getting ready to jump. Watch it, kid, jump, jump. Hey, look out, jump. Hey, he fell in the water and he's not coming up. Get in that lake, man. Get him out before he drowns. 
Missed my head about about an inch. <laughs> did, did you get the picture? I'll say we got the picture. And I got a protege. Boy, I'm taking you to Hollywood. You've got a job as long as I have. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present in person Frank McGrath, whose true experiences of entering the movies and becoming a picture stuntman have just been dramatized. Frank McGrath, interviewed by Hal Stiles. Well, Frank, that was a splendid story, and you've actually been in pictures ever since. That's right, to this very day. Well, tell me, what is your job now? I do all of Warner Baxter's stunts. In fact, I have a contract with him for seven years. We're signed with 20th Century Fox. Well, it was certainly a lucky night for you when you walked into that little cafe. <laughs> it certainly was. Things have been breaking for me ever since. Couldn't have a kick coming. Well, now that's fine. And I understand you've been offered several good parts and pictures. What about that? Oh, I've been offered a few, but I'd rather stay more or less in the background and just work with Mr. Baxter. Well, Frank, we've enjoyed your story more than we can possibly say, and I believe it's an inspiration to many young fellows who would like to come to Hollywood and perhaps duplicate your success. My advice to them is to stay at home. The odds are much against them here. Well, I can understand that, too. At any rate, on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you sincerely for coming here and I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you on this program again very soon. Goodbye, old man, and may your good luck continue. 